In this video, we're going to take a look at whether you can date or marry an INFJ. We will also take a look at whether or not they are good in relationships. The oldest of adages about marriage has it that marriages are made in heaven. And if the marriage goes awry, you can very well reverse the cliché on its head and say that marriages are made in hell. So it is only normal that people consider marriages as a thing that's pretty difficult to nail. And if things go wrong, there will be plenty of consequences, ranging from divorce settlements to false accusations and the psychological scars that children then need to bear. With so much at stake, it is a given that people will be wondering what kind of personalities they should marry. We are witnessing the acrimony that is taking place in the ongoing trial of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. The trial has split people into two factions, Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp, with millions and billions rooting for justice on either side. Yes, we know that most of us are not going to have a marriage that is as public as that, but people still don't want something that bitter. So people often ask if INFJs are good partners. And if they are, the lurking question is whether INFJs will be good marriage partners. The answer to both of these questions boils down to whether INFJ personalities are good in relationships. Before we get into answering this question, we would like to tell you that this effort of ours is to understand the psychology of people around us a whole lot better. And we make these videos for free. If you could subscribe to our channel, we'd be encouraged to make more videos like this. And if you can shower us with the simple gift of a like button, it would better our cause. Make sure that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Okay, let's get into the simple question of whether INFJs are good in relationships. That will give us a cue as to whether these people will be great life partners or not. Answering whether a certain personality type is the perfect fit for you is not as easy as writing down a yes or no question. Besides, sometimes we are tricked into believing that someone might be the right partner. So it is better for you to find out on your own whether you should form a relationship with an INFJ. Who are the INFJs? INFJ refers to one of the personalities out of the 16 currently identified in the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. INFJ is the abbreviation for introverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging. So if you know someone whose traits can generally be stable in terms of their introvertedness, intuitiveness, and if they are also feeling and judging, they would be considered an INFJ personality type. Research says that these people are statistically the lowest in terms of the number. Only around 1-3% to of the population of the USA is INFJ. So it is no wonder that people want to find out whether INFJs form good partners in a romantic relationship and whether one can put up with them from time to time. A relationship is not something that comes seamlessly. You have to work with your partner as time goes by. And since a relationship is not a one-way street, you also have to take your fair share into consideration and know whether the two of you can blend into each other. Having said that, it is necessary to know how INFJs generally behave. Some people might think that INFJs are known to be a walking paradox. This will make them a bad partner in a relationship, as a paradox can be too difficult to cope with. But the reasons why an INFJ is a paradox can be cute, too. Their introvertedness INFJs are introverted in nature, but are also looking for extrovertedness. They don't mind the company of others as long as they get some value out of the relationship. All they want is to have their points heard and for them to be understood by the people around them. So as long as you have a healthy friend circle that is appreciative of others and looks to make thoughtful conversations or make real connections, an INFJ is pretty perfect. What do you think so far? Add a comment below. Creativity INFJs are known to be some of the most creative people on the planet. They often tend to be wonderful musicians, great listeners in conversations, and will offer some of the most penetrating insights into the difficulties you might have. Some research also indicates that their conversations tend to be highly artistic as well. So if you are someone who is looking for a dash of creativity in your partner, then INFJs are the ones to go after want to achieve a sense of perfection. If you are progressive in life and want to constantly be better at the things you love and do and are looking for a similar value in your partner, then INFJs will be perfect for you. 
INFJs are incessantly striving towards perfection, whether it be in the arts they practice or in life in general. This gives the other partner a sense of challenge to constantly better themselves. It is said that there are layers of perfection in life and how wonderful it might be for you to get better and better each day as you penetrate the various layers of perfection. So in this sense, INFJs tend to make wonderful partners in life and they tend to nurture their relationships as well. Great communication skills. INFJs tend to be good conversationalists, as mentioned previously. As they are constantly trying to better themselves, this applies to the way they communicate too. They try to get their words and letters out perfectly. They also know that we don't simply communicate through what we say. There are plenty of other cues which give us a sense of how the relationship with the other person is. For example, the nervous jitters we have while we try to say something important to the other person, or facial expressions we make while communicating with others, is something that an INFJ notices and takes into consideration. If you are someone who wants your partner to read between the lines and find that quality a turn on, then INFJs will be perfect for you to date. But the same things that make INFJs such a turn on might also drive you to a point where you feel that you can't put up with them. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why this might be true. They put the feelings of others above themselves. Yes, the fact that INFJs tend to prioritize how others feel is one aspect of their lives which might be frustrating to deal with. INFJs feel, and with good reason, that they know the emotions of other people a lot better than the others know themselves. And they will often prioritize other people's emotions over their own. And this might sometimes be a put-off. You might as well say from time to time, you can prioritize your own emotions too for a change. We all have been hurt at one point or another in our lives when we put the concerns of others above our own and suffered as a result. The same might be true for an INFJ. And watching someone we love suffer is not such a pleasurable experience, is it? Do you have experience dating an INFJ? Tell us about it in the comments. Their sense of perfection might border on obsession. We sometimes tend to see only the romantic side of things, say the beauty of the life of a highly creative person. But we seldom see the story from the other perspective. A person who is highly creative also suffers, as he or she is trying to hone their skills to perfection. And this might often result in a sense of madness in terms of dedication to their art. This can be tough to deal with at times. If you are someone who wants to take only the positive side of things without actually knowing the other half, then INFJs might not be the ideal partners for you. But hey, can we only ever see good things in a person all the time? Alexander Solzhenitsyn once famously remarked in his book Gulag Archipelago that the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. Given that that is the case, we believe that you must be able to take a person's totality, the good along with the bad. And as long as you have that attitude, the sense of perfection that an INFJ is looking for should not be such a great problem. They might get lost despite having conversations with you. No one likes to be unheard. For example, when a person is trying to have a normal conversation with you, you want to give your full attention to them. You don't want to outsmart the other person just to establish a sense of superiority, nor would you want to put them down when they're miserable. You want to strike a fine balance between letting them know that you understand their problem and that there are territories of their problems which you have not trod upon. While having conversations, you might not want to be absent from the conversation either. You don't want to get lost in your own thoughts and not be there for others. But INFJs can be completely absent from a conversation you might be having with them. You might be talking about a scientific topic, and the INFJ might start a thread of thoughts inside their own head. They sometimes tend to play out the various implications of such ideas and start developing their own world as a result. This can be a tad irritating at times. But as we said previously, this is not a trait that is ingrained in them all the time. These are minor blips like you expect in any person. As you spend time dating an INFJ and if you marry them, you might feel that such behavior has repeated itself too often. But you'll get to know other wonderful aspects of an INFJ too and feel that the overall poise and balance is well maintained. All in all, if you should marry an INFJ or whether they are good or not should not be a great matter of concern to you. 
One thing that we are constantly looking for in life and love is a sense of assurance, an assurance that nothing bad will happen. But life is a great hodgepodge of the good and the bad. Slavoj Žižek says that people are scared to fall in love. They are simply looking for love without the fall, the element of uncertainty. And that makes the relationship somewhat predictable and too cozy. And anything that is too sweet might not be all that bad. So we want you not to take a potential partner to an INFJ through our lens alone. You have your own instincts that you can rely on to know whether a partner will be decent for you. And nothing in life comes as easy as pie. You have to work around some of the problems you will encounter and try to resolve them. A relationship where everything is perfect all the time is non-existent. Sometimes it is the imperfections that give a human touch to relationships and marriages. We hope you liked this video. In case you did, you can let us know which segments you found the most interesting. Don't miss out on any of our videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Meanwhile, you can watch the video on your screen.